Hello and welcome to the Django DRF API Query Fundamentals course. My name is Xander. Now this tutorial is part of a whole course playlist available for free on YouTube. For deeper learning, the full course is available for purchase at Udemy. Find all of these resources and links in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for weekly promotions, discounts and Udemy course giveaways. Next up, we're going to create a Postgres SQL and Django service within Docker. Now, before we start, you will require Docker Desktop to follow along step by step. So if you haven't already installed, then go ahead and install Docker Desktop and let's get started. All right, so in the previous tutorial, I have shown you how to set up Visual Studio Code with Rough. So that was optional, uh, but I will continue from this point so this project folder resides currently on my, my desktop, a new folder called new project. So if you haven't got a new project folder, go ahead and create a new project folder first and then open it up in Visual Studio Code if you want to follow along step by step. And this is where we currently are. So we can now continue from this point. Now all this setup code is available as a download. You will find it typically within the module primer or connected to the module primer of each module so you can go ahead and just download the code and follow along that way or else you can just go ahead and, and type it out now throughout this course i will be lifting in code i won't write out every single line of code because that's going to add another 10 hours to this course so i will lift in code and spend more time explaining code i think in my opinion, at least, that's more valuable than you watching me type code out. And generally, my brain cannot deal with explaining and typing at the same time. Unfortunately, I wasn't blessed with those skills. Can't do two things at once. Right, so let's start with zooming in a little bit. And we're going to create two new services. or We're going to create two new containers from images. That's Postgres and Django. Right, so first of all, let's go ahead and create a new file. And because we're going to describe more than one service in a project, we're going to use Docker Compose. So we're going to create this Docker Compose file, which is a YAML file, a YML file. So from here, we simply need to describe the services that we want to run. So we need to define, for example, the image that we want to use and any other settings, attribute parameters that we want to set to actually get the container started and running. Right, so first of all, let's start off with naming our project. What that relates to, if I go over to the dashboard, this name relates to our project name, which you can see up here, Django ORM course. That might be referred to as the stack name or project name. Okay, so now we can describe services. So we have services. What's important here, if you're not used to Docker, is indentation matters. So if you don't indent correctly, then the service won't come up. You will be told there are errors in the code, uh, but it's important to you, if you are following along, to make sure that you indent, indent correctly. So here we have an indent to start the new service. So I've given this service name a name of Postgres. You can change that name. I've just called it Postgres for now. Uh, you might call it Postgres DB, for example, because there's, there'll be plenty of other instances where we use the word Postgres. Uh, I'm going to stick to Postgres. So. First of all, we're going to describe the image or identify the image we want to use. Now, in this course, we're going to be utilizing 17.4 Alpine 3.21. Right, so if you want to follow along step by step and make sure everything works, that's the image you want to use. But with Postgres, you will find that if you are using earlier or later versions, particularly if you're watching this tutorial much later from when it initially was created, no doubt there are uh, newer versions of Postgres and they should work absolutely fine. Remember, like I showed you earlier, just head over to Docker Hub, look for Postgres, and you can view the different versions of images that you can use. Right, so I'm going to give this container a name. I'm going to call this Inventory DB. So we're going to create an inventory database throughout this course. This is why I've called this Inventory DB container. And I want to make sure that if the service stops for some reason, that it tries to restart. So if you read through the, doc the documentation for the Postgres image, you will find that we need to pass in a username and password in order to get the service working correctly in a container. Now, I realize this is an open text, clear text here. Obviously, if you're going to deploy this in any environment, you would need to secure this information. But for this course, learning, developing, 
we're going to simplify it by using Postgres as the username, Postgres as the password, so that we can log in and access our database. And of course, you can change that to whatever you like. Right, so we then go ahead and define a database. So this is going to tell Postgres that when it starts the container, to actually build this database in preparation for us to connect and start to create our database. So this is just an automated way of creating an initial database that we can use. And our database throughout this course is going to be called inventory. And then we need to open up ports. Now, remember that I said that the container was a, an isolated environment. So we can't actually access the container by default unless we open the doors, open the network ports so that we can send and retrieve in, receive information from the container. So what we're doing here is we're opening up a network port 5432 and we're mapping that across to the container. And by doing that, anytime we send data to this port, this network port, it's going to be sent through the network to the Docker container so it can then access and utilize that information. And likewise, we can then return data or information from the container through this port. So this is the doorway into and out of our container. And the Postgres database by default listens to this port number so that when we send data to it, it can then retrieve that data, receive that data and work with it. Right, so that's how we're going to communicate with our Postgres service through that port. Right, so next service, make sure you've indented this correctly. The next service is Django. You might call this Django Web or something else other than Django, up to you. This is slightly different here because there's a few more settings that we need to configure with Django. So let me briefly explain them. First of all, we want to run a custom build setup. So here I've defined this build option of dot, which refers to this folder file directory that the Docker Compose file currently resides in. In here, we're going to create a Docker file shortly with a, a simple setup to configure the container, how we need to configure it to run our Django application within the container. So we'll do that shortly, but we'll go ahead and create a name for our new container. So I've called this Django app. It's going to restart if it fails if the container fails it would try and restart the container and I'm going to add the depends on here we're just defining the order in which our containers start we don't want to start the Django container unless the database exists because Django depends on the database to work correctly so we're just saying this Django application or this Django container should start maybe after the Postgres container has started and we're going to set up a volume which means that we're going to create a, a mapping between our application code and a folder, which we'll create now called app. So this is where we're going to build our application in this app folder. So dot refers to the directory where the Docker Compose resides, slash app is our app folder. And then we're going to essentially map that across to a container folder slash app, which means that anytime we add or remove data here in the app folder, on our local machine, it will also then appear and be usable in the container. And likewise, if we store anything from within the container in this folder, it will appear locally. And that's going to allow us to save and persist our data, even if the container is deleted or removed. So when we restart the container, it will then utilize this folder, our Django code, which will be inside of this app to then run the Django application within the container. Now this is just one approach of creating volumes. Here we are simply mapping across a folder locally to our container. Now very much like the Postgres service, we will require access to the container. So we are mapping the port number 8000 on our machine to the port 8000 in the container. And that means again that we have opened a doorway from our local machine to the actual container so that we can communicate with it. Now, by default, Django, when we run Django, it will run on port 8000. We can change that number if we wanted to, but we're just going to use the default port. And then finally, for now, we just add a command. This command will run when the container starts, and that's going to start our Django application within the container. Now we've done that, let's now create a new file called Docker file. There is no file extension, just create a new file, Docker file. And first of all, let's describe 
or identify the image that we're going to utilize. Now this is a Python image. So if you head over to Docker Hub, type in Python, this is one of the Python images uh, which has a base of Linux and it has Python installed. And of course, if we're going to run Django, we are going to need Python installed because it is a Python application ultimately. So this is the image that we're going to use. Be careful to make sure that you don't necessarily use the most latest version of Python. Always check the Django website first to make sure that you select a version of Python that's supported by the version of Django that you're going to use. Now we set the work directory or the working directory. Now remember that the image I mentioned was very much like a blueprint. We can make changes to the image and that's essentially what we're doing here. We are building on top of the base image that we're downloading to configure it based upon our needs and requirements. And then we can run that as an image. We can run that as a container, sorry. So we go ahead and set the working directory so we know which directory we're currently working in in the image that we're using. And what I'm going to do here, because we're using uh, Alpine and we're going to be connecting to a database which requires a driver. To get that driver to work, we need to run some different dependencies to make sure that this driver that we're going to use to connect to the database works correctly. So I've gone ahead and done that. I'm not going to explain what each one does, but we're going to need all that in order to get the connection to our Postgres database working with the Alpine image. So that's just basically going to install everything that's needed to allow us to install the uh, driver so that we can start connecting to our database from Django. All right, so at this stage, we might want to copy everything from our application folder where our Django application resides or will reside over to the image so that when we start the image, Django is, is ready to run, but we don't need to in this case, because remember what we're doing here, we're using a volume. We're mapping across this folder anyway. So as we work and build our applications, it will just automatically uh, copy that over to the container. So we don't need to do that in this instance, but what we do need to do is make sure that our container is correctly set up and ready with all the requirements all the dependencies set. So let's go ahead and create a new file here called requirements.txt. And we're going to copy this file over to dot. So that's a reference to our work directory. So this requirements text file is going to be copied from our local machine over to the image that we've downloaded. And we want to then make sure that we have everything installed. So this is pretty much all the dependencies that we need to install for this course, Django. We're building a Django. Uh, DRF application, the Django REST framework, our database driver, and then this DRF Spectacular, this is going to provide us a, a user interface, which is going to allow us to inspect the different endpoints that we're going to create in this course. That's all the dependencies that we're going to need for this course. So what's going to happen is that they're going to be copied across, the file is going to be copied across over to our image. And then what we need to do is actually install those dependencies ready for us to start our Django application. So I'll go ahead and run pip install and then we run the requirements text. So that's going to download and install all the dependencies that's described in the requirements text file. Right, so we can go ahead and also expose the port to make sure that the port is ready for us to utilize with our Django application. So we won't need to make changes to that throughout this course. There are a few changes that we're going to make here in the command to automate the process of starting our Django application and making sure that our database is set up correctly. And we'll work through that a little bit later in the course, but that should be a good starting point for now. Right, so now we're ready to bring up the container. So I've just made sure to delete all the container and images so we can see what happens if you've not seen this before. I'm going to run docker space compose space up up refers to the fact that I want to tell docker to bring up the containers start the containers from the images that I've described in my settings and D just refers to the fact I want to run this in the background I don't want to return the output from the containers in my terminal so if I didn't use the D flag here we would end up let's let me just show you. let's let's do this first without D so allow that and what's happening now is that the images are downloading now the python image 
it's going to be quite large in this case because of all the different dependencies uh, so that will be over probably a gig uh, in size the database image probably around about two to three hundred mech so that might take a few seconds to download depending on your connection all right so it looks like everything has downloaded the images we have a postgres and we've created our custom image django rm course django image that was around about 1.2 gig okay right so notice that when we go to containers you can see that the database has started but django is flapping a little bit there it's trying to start now if i move into it it tells me in the logs potentially what the problem is now the problem we have here is that we don't actually have django started we don't have a django project in the app folder so it can't find it therefore uh, we have an issue so what you'll notice if i zoom out a little bit you can see that in the terminal it provides me all this information because i didn't use the d flag so i am seeing all the output from the two containers we have so the django and the inventory container so that might be preferable and you might then like to open up a new uh, terminal to run commands you might like to work that way but alternatively and what i will be doing through this course is i'll be using the d flag so that just generally means that you can see that's running in the background and it gives me access then to the terminal for me to continue developing so i can view all that information from the logs in the individual containers right so next up we're going to need to now work out how to get django running and we'll do that in the next tutorial so what you should have now is the postgres and django service described within docker compose file at the moment django doesn't work correctly we will get that working in the next tutorial do spend a few minutes if you can just maybe deleting what you've just done there and just familiarizing yourself with that process using that docker compose command creating your containers the the better you understand it at this point the easier it's going to be from this point